Greetings gang, Mark Boswell, Boswell Emergency Medical Education here, coming at you with another CEN video short. Um, this one, the topic is uh, Wernicke, course, Wernicke's encephalopathy and Korsakoff psychosis and thiamine and glucose. So kind of a couple things wrapped all together there. Um, I'm doing this video actually because one of the other groups I'm in, someone just posed the question about they saw, um, they witnessed something in their work site um, at their ER shop and a resident gave uh, glucose before thiamine and it was questioned and so they were asking why is this so it's really simple now for you guys that follow me because you're prepping for the CEN exam I'm gonna make this really short and to the point uh, give you just the bullets okay so basically um, a lot of us think of uh, Wernicke's encephalopathy and we think you know alcoholics yes a large majority of the patients at risk for this, which I'll get into in a second, are alcoholics. But I don't want you to ever exclude everybody else. Okay, the bigger group that's at risk for this with glucose administration, uh, IV, is um, anybody who is B1 or thiamine deficient. Now, of that group, alcoholics are a large amount, a large proportion of those. So how? How do we know someone's thiamine deficient? Well, if they have it by history, I guess you know that's their medical condition. But another safe bet is anybody who's malnourished, emaciated, just looks thin and like they don't eat very well, they potentially have a thiamine deficiency. Now, a lot of times in our basic uh, EMS uh, paramedic curriculums or even some other um, emergency uh, medicine stuff, we just say, you know, alcoholics are thiamine deficient because they choose to drink. Um, that's not necessarily true. Um, a big a big factor, and maybe the bigger one even, is being thiamine deficient because lack of adequate dietary intake. Where do you get thiamine from? You get it from protein sources. And yes, because alcoholics do, chin, do choose to drink alcohol, there's they they might give up or choose the alcohol over a more balanced dietary intake so typically an alcoholic does not have the protein intake that is required for a normal healthy functioning system so therefore that's one of your reasons why an alcoholic is high risk to be thiamine deficient. But again, this can be anybody that's not meeting the normal recommended amounts of thiamine intake via dietary, and it only takes a very little, um, you know, probably as long as you're eating one McDonald's burger or one day out at Waffle House, you know, you're probably, I've never researched this, but a normal average diet, you're getting plenty of thiamine, okay? So why is this important? Now that we've talked about who's at risk for it, remember at risk, everybody who's thiamine deficient. Why is it important? Because sometimes these patients who have thiamine deficiency as part of their underlying metabolic situation, they can get hypoglycemic, and that really has nothing to do with the thiamine. They can get hypoglycemic for many reasons, just like a lot of people can, okay? Um, now, alcoholics, again, are a higher risk group to get, al to get hypoglycemic, not because they're an alcoholic drinking alcohol, but because of the liver damage. Remember, your liver stores glycogen as a backup energy source. And if you have a chronic alcoholism, uh, chronic liver disease, from other things, cirrhosis, um, maybe even uh, maybe if you're convalescing from a very hard hit hepatitis infection, your liver's ability to store that glycogen is gonna be impaired. So you don't have that glycogen as a backup resource when your blood sugar goes low, like between meals or um, you've been out hard exerting yourself for many hours or something like that normal people with normal healthy functioning bodies their liver will kick out the glycogen to build up their circulating glucose okay so this is a second reason why alcoholics make up a big percentage of these people who are at risk because they could drop their blood sugar okay so here's a scenario you have a person who is hypoglycemic all right if they look malnourished history of alcoholism history of b1 thiamine deficiency we need to give them thiamine iv that's 100 milligrams iv push not a banana bag banana bags don't save lives they're not an emergency treatment we're getting away from it if you haven't if you haven't seen what your providers are doing banana bags are not a life-saving drug the 100 of thiamine in your iv syringe that you push over i think three to five minutes uh someone check me on that that's the lifesaver you give that then you give the glucose, the D50 or the D10, whatever you're given to bring that sugar up emergently. And the reason you do that is because that thiamine is necessary to metabolize that glucose. Now specifically, and it has to do with ATPs, uh, ATPs are being created and the mechanisms to do that, that's well beyond what anybody needs to know here. The concern with the Wernicke 
encephalopathy is this large glucose molecule can't pass, I, I will make it real simple, can't pass a blood brain barrier without being metabolized to give its glucose to the brain cells that are fixing to die because you're hypoglycemic. That 100 of thiamine IV push immediately starts to affect the body's metabolic pathways so that glucose can be metabolized to a way that can cross the blood brain barrier effectively and be utilized and prevent brain damage. Where's the brain damage come in? Because that glucose is stuck outside of the brain, it can't get in, and that brain wants to swell, so you get cerebral edema. That edema is the encephalopathy, which is going to damage the brain tissue. Korsakoff psychosis is down the road where they go on to develop a, a psychotic type altered thought process that's permanent because it's permanent brain damage for the most part. So what's your bullets, what's the recap? Thiamine, thiamine, glucose, alcoholics, Wernicke's, Korsakoff, all that. Here you go. If you don't have B1, thiamine, and you could be anybody that's either malnourished, B1 deficient, or an alcoholic, all right, needs thiamine before glucose is given to bring up their hypoglycemia. Where does B1 normally come from, thiamine? Protein sources. Patients who don't eat adequate stores, patients who would rather drink rather than eat, they could potentially be thiamine deficient. How do you do this? You forget the banana bag, you're not saving a life. Their blood sugar is low, you grab the D50, you grab 100 of thiamine, you give the thiamine first, immediately right before it, it's 100 milligrams, IV push times one, then you can go ahead and push your glucose. Um, if this patient is also, um, you, you might even, let's say even your alcoholic or malnourished patient is not hypoglycemic, but your provider's ordering a dextrose kit containing solution, so some D5 half, some D5 LR, they should still be giving that thiamine before that dextrose IV bag starts because the same problem can happen. So even though this patient isn't hypoglycemic and needs a, an amp of D50, but they just need some D5 LR running, you know, 150 or 200 hour, before that glucose gets in there, if they're malnourished and risk of thiamine deficiency, they need 100 of thiamine IV push, okay? Hope that helps you guys. Hope that's useful. I'm going to cross post this or to the other group as well too. And you guys, if you watch this all the way to the end, it looks like it's about eight minutes long. Uh, feel free to come um, come watch my page over at um, Boswell Emergency Medical Education. You don't have to be a CEN candidate to watch that page. I put up a lot of stuff about emergency medicine um, and other tidbits and things like that. I hope you found this useful. Y'all be safe. Peace out.